I am Uhtred, son of Uhtred. I can't do it like he does it. Let's talk about this movie. I am Uhtred, son of Uhtred. What's up, Netflix fans? We're going to get right into this very quick review for the culmination of The Last Kingdom. I was excited about the fact that we got this movie, but at the same time, I kind of wanted another season. Regardless, I was going to this movie with pretty high expectations. Let's talk about it. Uhtred of Bebenberg must ride once more across a fractured kingdom with several of the series' much-loved returning characters as they battle alongside and against new enemies and allies. And at the beginning, not necessarily a spoiler, I believe this is in the summary, we have the death of King Edward, who Uhtred uh, did not swear allegiance to at the end of Season 5, the last time we saw him, but his son has now taken power and is quickly going against, and this sounds very cliche anyone who stands in his way nerd alert so obviously Uhtred who is very opposed to what Athelstan is being uh, told you know in the vein of Lord of the Rings with Worm Tongue that's kind of always the case with a movie or show like this somebody whispering in the ear and trying to lead the ruler or the king or whomever in that direction to use for their own purposes. That's kind of what's going on in this movie. And with only a two hour runtime, actually an hour and 40 minutes, you don't have a ton of time to flesh out that story, flesh out what's going on with Uhtred, flesh out uh, what's being told to everyone at the beginning, someone having this vision or dream, if you will, that the seven kings must die. Well, what does that mean? That's part of the conversation at the beginning of the film. And uh, as always with this show, I believe the conversations between characters, I believe the character buildup, mostly Uhtred's journey, but also those around them and how they interweave into the storyline. I think that's just as interesting as the battles, the grand epic fight sequences that we see, and we get one of those at the end of this movie, but it's not going to be interlaced throughout this film. That's part of the reason why I'm still of the mindset that this maybe could have been a final season or at least a four episode epic culmination of everything it didn't necessarily need to be a movie because we do kind of rush through certain things and the format of a show for the last kingdom in my opinion works better than the format of a movie but only because the story they were trying to tell in this movie I believe had a lot more to it than what we actually got now is that me saying I hated this experience no no I did not it was really cool to see uh, the route that certain characters went down, and then that clash between Uhtred and the sun, and just the idea of what that represents, especially when you look back at his journey building up to this man. It's it's really tragic to see at the beginning, and uh, there's one death at the beginning, well, a couple of deaths at the beginning, uh, or the first half of this film, that had me uh, torn all to pieces, man. With a finale, you're always going to get characters that may not make it through to the end. And with a battle this grand and epic, and I keep teasing it, but we'll talk about that here in just a second, um, it does pay off, right? The movie itself, I felt a lack of maybe bringing together all of the promises. Now, the irony of the fact that the villains of this world are those that Uhtred once believed might be its salvation, those that he looked upon and said... This could be how everyone reunites and, and the kingdoms could come together. And then you watch what happens in this movie and you're like, oh my God, like the path that this went down is tragic, but that's the type of story that frankly has been told throughout every season so far. Now you're going to have characters backstabbing each other, a series of betrayals in this movie. Obviously, uh, those that are feeding those ideas into the ears of Athelstan, that's that's interesting, but at the same time, you're just kind of on the edge thinking what's going to happen to who and is is everything going to come together in the way that Uhtred has been saying for so long. And the characters who return that I was excited about, some of them get a little more than expected, others do not. Of course, Astrid, Brand, Edmund. I, I saw one complaint on Twitter, someone who reviewed this, and not to call that person out, but they said, if you're going in blind to this movie and don't intimately know the characters, you're probably not going to like it. And I'm sitting back going, what's the point, uh, genuinely, what's the point of watching this film if you've never seen any of this series and you don't know any of the characters? Of course you're not going to like it. You don't have any recognition of stakes. You don't have any idea. Like, even if you are a critic sent to review this, if you've never seen the show, why are you reviewing it? I don't even know if that's the case. That may be the case. It may not be. But it, to me, it's like, you have to have that prior knowledge. If you have that prior knowledge... There is no confusion, right? There could be the issue of pacing. There could be the issue that it's so heavy with these conversations and with the fact that you have to fit it all into this runtime. And that's a hard thing to do. 
There are battles, there are cool sequences, but when you're so focused on the dialogue, yet you have to put so much in there, in that runtime, uh, then it may be a tough task. And I do think at points of this film, I did feel that, but intimately knowing the characters, getting the conclusion, and I guess talking about that battle, it is fantastic. Fantastic. It is the epic conclusion that I think a lot of people are going to want and frankly going to need for The Last Kingdom to where you feel oh so satisfied at the end. So I'm looking at this as an experience of I really enjoyed this movie, my time learning the fate of these characters. I think they could have done a few things better. Screenplay wise, made it a bit more concise, make it a bit more epic at points instead of just moments that could feel like filler. But if you're a fan of this show, it's not going to feel like filler. It's going to feel like you're at least with these characters in these moments. So uh, all in all, I had a good time with this. I think this is a fitting conclusion for this series. And if you're a fan of the show, you're probably going to be a fan of this movie. You don't need me to tell you that. All right, I get it! If you're here before I drop my score and you want to support this video, dropping a like would be awesome. Stay tuned. I try to review everything I can on Netflix, but there's a lot of stuff on Netflix and other streaming services. And what feels like a fitting conclusion to a story that so many love, Seven Kings Must Die brings the stakes and nails the tone. The runtime doesn't fully allow it to deliver, but it works. And for that, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this experience, and it is a recommendation if you watch the show. If you didn't watch the show... I, I don't know what to tell you. Watch the show first. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.